Okay, um, so I'm just going to use this other program just to see um, how making videos goes. I'm going to make a couple of ne the next sets of videos uh, using this program. I would like your feedback on uh, how you feel these have gone in contrast to the other method of me making videos. Um, it is a bit easier for me to do it on like this, but um, I don't. it's not about being easy, it's about being effective. So um, if you can uh, do give me feedback on uh, how these appear, that would be grand. All right, so we're going to talk about deforming materials. So we'll start off uh, nice and quickly with um, just the basic ideas that we've come across so far. So, uh, okay, in simplicity, we started off with the idea that force over extension, you get a nice straight line that um, has a gradient of K. Um, and that is the force constant for that uh, material when you extend it uh, with a force uh, in newtons. So, um, more profound, what we looked at doing here is we look to um, actually explain some of the differences that can occur. So, um, if we just draw another line here that curves off. Now, this is uh, an example of where something's past its elastic limit. So, you see right here, it's no longer behaving under Hooke's law. Extension is no longer directly proportional to the force. Um, and so it's past what we call its elastic limit, and that's where I've drawn the line there. So I'll just rub that out again. Draw that back in. What the um, what we'd expect this material to do is something quite interesting, because what we would expect it to do as it unloads, so the first line is a load, this line... is the unloading. And you'll see that picture in your textbook nice and clearly. Now what's really important about this is that you realize it's the same material. Now you can observe this uh, really in something like a, a wire when you pass this uh, elastic limit, we start plastically deforming it. Then what ends up happening is just you get, um, it's the same material and so it has to follow the same rules. And as you'll notice, as I've just drawn there, I've drawn two gradients and they are effectively the same gradient. So they both equal K. So even though I've plastically deformed this material, I'd still expect the same gradient to come out of it because it's the same force constant. Um, now that's not to say that's always the case, however, unfortunately, because um, what ends up happening is that we um, essentially have a problem because what will end up happening is different materials will follow different rules. So if we take for this, for example, so that's the typical loading curve for rubber. Um, so as you put more force on it to the extension, and when you unload it, it looks something like this. Um, now, that's, that's very profound because actually you've got this area in the middle here, which is quite important. Now, the, the loading curve, the, the first one I drew, is higher. And as you'll know about a force extension graph in the previous videos, we talked about that the, the area underneath a force extension graph is equal to the energy. So the area is equal to the energy stored or the energy released in unloading, which is very profound here because you'll notice that the, the unloading line is lower than the loading line, which means there's less energy get coming out. Um, essentially, that's work done by the restoring forces in the material. So this is rubber. Now, what you'll notice is there's, there's some energy in here that's, that's not accounted for. Now that energy is not lost, it's not going anywhere, it's going somewhere else. It's it's turning into heat. So it's becoming heat energy. And that heat energy um, essentially goes to the surroundings. And that's why, for example, when you look at airplane tires, airplane tires are made out of rubber because of this property called hysteresis. Let's just write that down. Hysteresis. Uh, let's make sure I spell that right. Hysteresis. Now, hysteresis is a very important word. You do need to know that because that is this property. Essentially, it's the property where you get less out than you put in, um, which, which is quite nice in this circumstance. So let's have a look and describe this a bit more. 
So in this uh, in this bit, we'll, we'll look at the idea about um, the airplane tire. Now, if you think carefully about the airplane tire, as it comes down, it's nice and circular, and as it hits the ground, it gets squished. Now, if it didn't have this property of hysteresis, what we'd expect is the same amount of energy that went into compressing the um, the tire would come out as well. And as a result, what would happen is is that the wheel would bounce upwards, similar to like a bouncy ball or something like that. Now, I don't know how many planes you've been on, but uh, I don't experience a whole lot of bouncing when I um, when I land. So, what actually happens, quite uniquely is that as the plane comes into land, the tire again does, does squish, but it doesn't bounce all the way back up, or at least not very high if it does, because of this process called hysteresis. Now that's quite useful because not all the energy that went into squishing the tire comes out again. You don't get it out as work done restoring it to its original shape. It gets transferred to heat. So as a result, the tires get hot. Um, well, we don't have to worry too much about heat because we can cool things down without too much difficulty. But in this case, it's very beneficial because we don't want to be bouncing our way to a landing and that's very uncomfortable. Um, but it works quite profoundly here. Right, so another object that doesn't follow Hooke's Law is uh, something like a polythene bag. So if I draw, of course, extension graph for that. What we'd expect, and you'll see this diagram in your book as well, just uh, so we can talk about it. Um, you expect something like that. Now let's just talk through this line that I've just drawn over again there is the loading curve. So that's what, I, what you'd expect when you load a plastic bag. And this is what happens, and this one, the one drawn downwards, is what happens when you unload. Now, when you unload the, the plastic bag, you get a very different kind of uh, situation. And um, this is just a kind of graph that you need to have uh, in your inventory of knowledge to make sure that you, uh, you have it basically in case they ask you to sketch it really more than anything else.